Hi and welcome. My name is Lawrence Baker. I'm an Adobe Certified Expert in Photoshop CC and Photoshop Lightroom. This video is going to be about going into Photoshop with a photograph from Lightroom. I'm not going to teach you the tools inside Photoshop by rote. I'm only going to show you how you can get creative with a photograph with Photoshop quite quickly. Now I've been using Photoshop for years and I still am on a learning curve. So it is very intimidating, but a lot of the tools are duplicated and some of the tools are very simple and I'd like to give you a brief overview of how they work. Let's first go to the preferences inside Lightroom to see what effects the preferences will have upon our export into Photoshop. Right, preferences, external editing, edit in Photoshop CC 2015, uh, TIFF, Profoto RGB 16 bits. These are all defaults, leave them as they are. And read the blurb on the side because it recommends you keep it at those settings. The only one that's different is resolution. Now resolution is about printing and not about images that are gonna stay on the screen. So don't fret with it too much. I believe it defaults at 150 or 200, irrespective, it will not affect how that image is viewed inside Photoshop. Now, if you're going out to a high-end printer, put 300 or whatever your printer recommends. Keep the compression at none. You don't need to compress the file and I believe it's the default as well. Right, let's close that down and go to Photo, Edit In, Adobe Photoshop CC 2015 or Command E or Control E. Right, we're in Photoshop. Just a quick overview. This is a picture of a 15th century lighthouse built as punishment by a local lord who was involved with shipwrecking and smuggling. So I want to go for a sort of pirate theme and I've got an idea that I might use skull and crossbones. Now, I don't have a picture of skull and crossbones. So I could go to Adobe Stock Images or some other agency online, but on this occasion, I'm gonna use Google Image Search. Now, the normal copyright rules apply. Even I could be uh, breaching copyright by using someone else's photograph in a YouTube video. So I have to be careful. So I could be contacted by the copyright owner. I have Google Chrome open. I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut of Alt and tab. Here we go. Now Google's open. Skull and crossbones or skull crossbones, whatever. Images. Right, to get the larger size possible, search tools, size larger than four megapixels. That's one edge pixels times the other edge pixels. This suits me quite well because it has a strong background, so it'd be easier to mask it. In other words, separate the skull from the background. So let's view the image. Let's right click to save as. Let's set the name. I'm going to save it to my desktop or wherever. Save. Alt tab to return to Photoshop. File open or command control open. Find the pirate open. Right, this is quite crucial. To move this into the other image, and it will come in as a separate layer, so I'm going to composite this on the other layer, you need to drag it up to the tab above. Now many people get this wrong when they do this, because once you drag up, you've got to wait until you see the other image, then drag it back in. So up to the tab, see the other image, drag back down. Now we get this warning about quality because We've got a TIFF that's 16-bit and all JPEGs are 8 bits. So ignore it on this occasion. Just hit yes. Now we have the image. It's huge. We, we knew it would be. So we need to make it more manageable. So what we need to do is go to Edit Transform. Now I use keyboard shortcuts, so I'm going to go Command or Control T. It's my favorite shortcut. Right. I could have gone to edit and free transform, but um, I'm going to use shortcuts where I can because I need to make this video reasonably short. Now, I can't see the bounding box. 
because the bounding box is outside of the canvas area. Now keyboard shortcuts won't work on this occasion. I could show you this by going command zero, which is the normal shortcut. You have to go up to the view menu and then go view fit on screen. And then you'll see the bounding box. Now you'll see this is obviously far too large for our original image. So we need to make it smaller. We could just go to the handles at the side or the corners at the top, but please remember to keep the shift key pressed. It's very important because it will constrain the proportions to the original size. So you're actually resizing an image, but on a layer. So it has to do some interpolation, which is a posh word for what it's going to do to the image uh, uh, when it resizes it. As we're making it smaller, it's going to throw pixels away. It's a complex subject, so don't get too involved with it now. When we're happy with the transform, just hit the tick in the toolbar options above or just press return. So I'm going to make it a bit smaller because I'm not sure quite what I'm going to do with this image yet. I think I'm going to go for a book cover, so I need to make it quite small. I'll probably heavily crop the image anyway, so I've got a rough idea of the layout in my head already. So I press return and accepted the transform. There are many ways to select something in Photoshop. The normal route is either the magic wand or underneath that is the quick selection tool. There's also some tools under the select menu as well, and I'll show you them in a minute. But basically, the two main tools are the magic wand and quick selection tool. Where you've got a continuous background like this black here, this is the best tool because it will pick up all that black in one hit. There's nothing wrong with the other tools there, but you've just got to decide which one you need to use first. The normal one is the quick selection tool. I'm going to use the magic wand tool. The tolerance is normally set to 32. Keep those other two boxes ticked. Contiguous means next door to each other, so you should be able to work it out. Um, the other one is, uh, well, very important, is the refine edge. But that would normally come up once you've made your selection and as it sounds it will refine the edge of the mask. Now I've selected the background, it didn't select the eyes because I didn't have contiguous unticked and that's all dependent on the tolerance as well. So all I really need to do here is press delete or backspace depending on its Mac or PC and I've deleted the background. Now I need to get rid of the selection, I just go command D or I could go up to select and deselect. Anything to do with selections will normally be under the select menu, but your two primary tools are for selecting are the magic wand and the quick selection tool, which is the best tool for complex masking. So we need to make the skull look better against the background. We need to go to blend modes. The layers blend mode is normally set to normal. But the useful ones to remember are Multiply, Screen, Overlay and Soft Light. You will notice there's a line under each section. Now these ones will darken the image. These ones will lighten the image. And these are contrast modes. And we're going to use Soft Light. As it sounds, it will soften the effect of the skull and crossbones on the background. So let's see what soft light can do. Straight away it's softened the effect. Now it's too soft for me, so if you want more contrast, use overlay. Now I've decided to turn this into a book cover, let's say. So I need a font. So I've done a bit of research and I found a font. Now I spent more time finding the font than I did anything else. So I've got a font called Tratatello Regular. So I'm going to press T on the keyboard shortcut to get to the type tool or I could have pressed the T icon on the toolbar. Now finding fonts is quite easy these days. You've got Adobe type kit. You can go to Google search and search under a name, let's say pirate font. So you've got to be creative in finding your fonts and getting your font to match is absolutely crucial to your artwork. Before I start using the type tool, I like to pick a color first. So if you go up to the tool options bar and right to the end almost, you'll see 
a little gray icon there for black or gray or which color I picked before. I'm going to pick a deep ready brown. Wherever I tick with this horizontal type tool, you saw the eye beam there, the text will be created. It's created its own layer as well. So I'm going to start typing now and I'm going to put, let's say, Pirates of the Isle of Wight. Now, don't worry too much about the position because we're going to move it with the move tool, which is on the toolbar at the very top. V is the keyboard shortcut. There it is. So once I've done that, I can move it around. So I've selected it and I moved it into position I like. I can keep moving it around to my heart's content. Now I'm going to crop this image. So I could press C on the keyboard or go up to the toolbar and select the crop icon here. Uh, I didn't select it very well, sorry guys. Now I could keep the shift key pressed, but I'm not bothered about the dimensions or proportions at the moment. I'm just going to bring it in from the sides to get it roughly to book shape. Right, that's roughly about there. No, a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's roughly okay. A bit more, I'm playing around. I'll probably bring the type and the skull um, to the right slightly. Yeah, I think I'm fine with that. So I press return to accept it. Right, I'm going to hit the move tool now to move the type. Uh, I don't mind it encroaching on the lighthouse. So I was on the layer there. So I'm going to go to the skull layer now and move that across. You can see those little purple lines showing you that you can line stuff up. There's many tools in Photoshop now for lining stuff up. It's almost like Adobe Illustrator. Right, I'm quite happy with that. That's not too bad. Right, I'm going to grunge this up a little bit and I'm going to use a texture from Lightroom and I'm going to overlay it over the top of everything and use soft light or overlay to contrast it. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So let's make a trip to Lightroom. As I have Lightroom open, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Alt and Tab. It's a great time saver. Right, we're into Lightroom. A G for grid. Into the grid, I found my image. I'm going to develop it quickly. And when I finish with it, I'm going to go Command or Control E. That saves me going Photo, Edit in Photoshop. So once I've got it to where I want it, I'm just going to go Command or Control E. Right, into Photoshop. Back into Photoshop, we need to use the move tool, drag it up to our original photograph as before, hit the tab, bring it back down in and it's filled up our screen and it's actually in the wrong place. So I'm going to drag it up in the layers to the right place, use soft light first, not too bad, it's quite good. Or I could use overlay, let's say, which will make it a little bit more contrasty. So let's give that a try. I'm not disappointed with that. In fact, I think it's quite good. But what happens if you don't have a texture to, to, to hand? You could do a Google search or whatever, or go to Adobe Stock Images, but there is an extension called Adobe Paper Texture Pro, which is very good. And it's bizarrely called an add-on on the website, but an extension inside Photoshop. So here it is there on my system. And if you want to get it, you need to go to Window, Browse Extensions Online, Find it there, click on it, and go through the process. It's free for subscribers to CC. Uh, Alt-Tab back into Photoshop, delete that stone layer, up to Adobe Paper Texture Pro, and let's pick a few textures to add. You can add as many as you like. You can buy an upgrade to this, by the way. But this is more than enough for most of us, but I tend to photograph my own textures anyway. So uh, I'm going to add another one there on top. So you get the idea. Um, you can just add textures to it and it's not, it's not too bad and if I want to play around this a little bit more let's say I could change the font size I could play around the skull it's hardly a finished product but you get the idea guys you can be very creative very quickly with Photoshop now if I wanted to change things I could move that type or make it smaller I selected it command T shift key press to constrain it to the proportions bring it down to the size I like hit return Hit the V key, I can move the skull around as long as I'm on the right layer, of course. So I move the skull around. So, you know, it's hardly a finished piece of artwork, this. Um, let's add another, another texture, for instance. So let's pick a texture and see what we can do with this. Um, yeah, let's pick that. I think I've done enough today, guys, don't you? I uh, don't want to ruin it anymore. Thanks very much for listening, guys.